Hello and welcome to the thing I kept pushing off for weeks and weeks, which is the Kiching guide I promised. So, as a little intro, who am I? Well, I am just your average Kiching main who likes to play Kiching in Spiral Abyss and attempt to get speedruns with her, as well as just, yeah, I just like Kiching. What can I say? She's adorable. She's best girl. And everybody who says differently is just objectively wrong. So what is this guide going to be about? I'm going to attempt to give you an overview and summary of my thoughts on a variety of topics uh, ranging from Kiching's um, playstyle to her artifacts, her weapons, constellations, synergies, and finally even talent priority. I'll try to add in a couple of clips I got from Spiral Abyss and other things just to showcase uh, some of Kitching's strengths, weaknesses. And yeah, I can only hope you will enjoy and find something useful in this. If you do, please leave a comment, maybe even a subscription. But okay, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't really give a shit. So let's get into it. For the first section of this guide, I'm gonna go over basic bread and butter combos uh, and mechanics for Kiching. So what you will do most often is just spam your charge attack like this. Keep in mind that whenever you charge attack, you step back. So you might have to make a step to the front either with a dash if you don't need as many but if you want to get as many charge attacks out as possible just walk forward then the next one as soon as your stamina reaches let's say about 25 percent so around here you want to do four autos and then charge as you can see the bar stays quite consistent and you don't run, uh, just run out of stamina and lose a lot of DPS in the process. Then, as for ability usage on Kaching, uh, the main way you want to use your abilities if possible, especially if you have Constellation 1, but I'll get into that later, is to E. Uh, I need to charge. <laughs> Oh, that's unlucky. There we go. The main usage um, you will experience is E. Well, there's the double E. And what you what you want to do to maximize your damage is E, Q, E, charge attack. Which will do about the most damage because you get the 15% crit. Uh, her second talent gives you after performing the ultimate and it's, I would say it's very simple to execute it's basically just E Q E and then follow it up with a charge attack so I'll show it one more time just for posterity's sake there E Q E and charge. Okay. Doesn't matter. I don't want to kill him. Let's move on to the next point. The next thing I want to go over is how to deal with shield to leech. As you can see, if I just attack him head on, he's going to block all the damage with his shield. But if I go above him, it triggers this uh, throwing animation. And I can hit him for free. This was useful uh, in one of the last Spiral Abyss iterations where um, there were a bunch of shield healing turtles and Kiching with this little trick uh, was able to deal with them very easily. The next thing I would like to go over is um, a more advanced technique that is not exclusive to Kaching but can be used on her as well. It's called the Dragon Strike. 
which means essentially doing an attack and using the hit lag and unit collision to get a higher jump animation which allows you to perform a plunge attack if I can actually get it down. As you can see it's quite tricky. There it is. It requires the right angle and how you do it is you hit and right when you hit um, you have to press the press the sprint button and then instantly jump and towards the enemy so you get the unit collision which hopefully will allow you can you stop hitting I want to show the trick yeah well the point is um, you have to hit it at the precise uh, at the right angle and provoke a unit collision animation when you jump which allows you to gain extra height and perform a plunge attack it is much easier to perform on slower attackers like the Luke but Kitching is able to do it as well um, for use cases which in my opinion is rather important because what good is a technique if you're never gonna use it uh, for use cases, I was able to use it uh, during my attempt to clear um, Spiral Abyss 12 um, with Kiching in 10 seconds, coupled with the Thunderclap Flash technique, which unfortunately has been patched out. Um, and it allowed me to do a rather stylish, if I may say so myself, uh, 10 second clear. Which, yeah, I I quite enjoyed. So there, there we got it one more time. So this was the dragon strike, and finally, I'm gonna go into covering the sadly patched out thunderclap flash technique. So I'll have to use old footage for that. But just because I missed it so much, I would feel bad not including it. And one more, for good measure. All right, Let and here we go into Incoming. the Thunderclap Good Flash. So the trick was, unfortunately it's patched, Incoming. to be able to put the stiletto out in the air, trigger the stiletto explosion and then get in the, the teleport. So the reactivation of E. Thus essentially gaining double E damage on Kitching. As you can see in this old footage, I was able to do it and combine it with the just previously shown Dragon Strike, which in my opinion just looked amazingly cool. There's the explosion, then the teleport, and then the Dragon Strike, if it works out. Yeah, there it is. Just beautiful technique. Very much a shame that they didn't leave it in to at least balance Kitching in that way. But, well, MiHoYo didn't like that. And now, because I mentioned before, use cases are important. Here is the clip where I was able to use the Thunderclap Flash and the Dragon Strike, as you can see here, on Spiral Abyss Floor 12, which, in my opinion, still the nicest clip I've gotten in this game. Our next main point are the artifacts, because I know everybody's wondering what artifact sets should I use on Kiching. So my personal ranking for Kiching artifacts um, is as follows. The four Thunder Suzer set, which uh, gives you 35% extra damage um, as long as your opponents are affected by Electro. Since I'm using this set, um, I mean, pretty much all the time using two Electro characters on my Kaching teams to ensure the highest possible uptime. Um, with this set, it is not recommended to run Pyro units, maybe Bennett, but Bennett is just the 
best support character in the game. So that is a different story we'll cover later. Um, but for example, Zhang Ling is not great because the overload procs uh, consume the electro status on the enemies. So you lose damage. So yeah, um, I'll, I'll come to team comps later on, but this would be my top recommendation for artifact sets. Then the second option uh, you can go to would be two thundering fury and two gladiator which in my case would look something like this but i have to add i do not have great gladiator pieces so the stats are a bit off um, the benefit here as you can see crit stats are way too low with this and yeah it's just not as good unfortunately Oh, well, maybe I should use the right weapon. So, yeah, it, it has like 20% less crit damage, but higher crit rate for me because my, my items aren't perfect. I also actually lose uh, attack because my uh, four Thunder Suzer pieces are just very, very good by now. Anyway, this is probably the best generalist set for Kiching because you don't rely on Electro application. You just get your 15% Electro bonus and 18% extra attack. But keep in mind, Gladiator set bonus is literally just attack stat equal to about three to four um, attack percent rolls on your uh, on your substat. So, for example, on my Thunder Suzer set which I will re-equip now. I have much higher attack percent rolls uh, than on the others, so I do not get any benefit from using Gladiator. Um, another option that you can, of course, run is um, to Thundering Fury to Noblesse, uh, which improves your ultimate damage which is probably um, the next best uh, set to Thunder Soother when it comes to quick swap kitching teams. Like, for example, if you run her with Venti and Fischl and stuff like that, and you just use her to quickly swap in, uh, burn the ultimate and swap out again, that would be the best use case because it essentially gives you 35% damage as well because 20% on the ultimate and 15% electro. Mm, thus, it would kind of equalize um, the the Thunder Soother damage. But as I said, I prefer to use Thunder Soother because I like to have Kaching do most of the work instead of just rotating through everybody. Other options um, would be Bloodstained Chivalry, uh, two and two gladiator for physical, but I'm gonna say it right now. I do not like physical catching. I feel like it wastes most of her potential, and most importantly, it's very unfun to play because you just become a charge attack bot. So, if you want to enjoy playing catching, I really do not recommend this at all. Then, well, there is one more option. And for this one, I have to say, fuck you, Tuna. You're wrong. I would be for, <laughs> for Thundering Fury, which, granted, it can be a very fun set to use uh, because it gives you this right here, the decreased elemental skill cooldown, so you can spam E even more which, in my opinion, isn't strictly necessary because the charge attacks spam just has very high DPS anyway. But, I mean, you can use it if the substats are really good for you and better than Gladiator if you don't get lucky on good Gladiator pieces. Four Thundering Fury is perfectly fine. But yeah, still fuck you, Tuna. It's not good. My is better. I don't care what you say. And, well, I guess I should cover other more niche options like four-piece bolide and stuff like that. 
Again, Bolide only affects charge attacks. So again, you just become a charge attack bot, which in my humble opinion is just kind of bad. So don't use them. Just use uh, Thunder Soother or Thundering Fury and Glad or Noblesse. That's just the best bet. Next up, we have Kiching's weapon options. So right away for the best in slots at the moment, uh, time when I'm making this video, patch 1.4 is Primordial Jade Cutter because it has an ungodly high amount of crit rate at level 90. 44% crit rate is just insane. And the passive is actually very good too, not because of the HP, but because it converts um, your max HP into attack, which means even at refinement rank one, which would give it a 20% HP increase and 1.2% of max HP as attack, gives you a surprisingly high amount of attack, like about 300 or even more, which is always very good to have. And in my case, it actually allows me to hit 2.6K attack uh, with these crit stats, which, yeah, I think it speaks for itself. If you are not lucky enough to have a Primordial Jade Cutter, other best in slot options include the Summit Shaper, because for Electro it is the second best weapon because of the high attack percent stat. And if you run Kaching with Zhongli or C6 Beidou, you also get the bonus of the shield while it's on you increasing um, the attack further that you gain from, from the stacks. So this is also a very good weapon, even though it's very ugly, but that's neither here nor there. Next best is the Aquila Favonia, the most beautiful sword in the game. So if you have it, I can only recommend using it on Kiching or on Bennett for that matter, because high base attack, but different topic. So even though it only provides um, physical damage bonus and we do not want that on Electro Kaching, which this guide is about, not physical because I don't like physical, although for completion's sake, Aquila Favonia is easily the best in slot weapon. Well, tied with Jade Cutter because Jade Cutter is OP, but other than that, best in slot for physical Kaching. But don't play physical Kaching. Then we come to the four star options. Don't use Skyward Blade, by the way. You don't want that, it's just bad. For the four star options, my favorite is the Lion's Roar because it synergizes very well with um, Thunder Soother set for the extra damage bonus. With R5, it's 36%, which actually makes it better than Aquila Favonia. Uh, as long as you have Electro Pyro applied. In this case, usually it's probably going to be Electro with Kiching, which is very good, but only if you can hit a certain amount of crit rate while using it. So in my opinion, you should always aim for at least 60% crit rate. And if you cannot reach that with Lion's Roar, you're probably better off with the Black Sword, which is also a very, very good option on Kiching. Um, also utility-wise, because it allows you to heal by yourself and you don't have to have to rely on your team healers as much. So these are both very good. As for other options, I guess the flute is also all right. It isn't as good as the other two four-star options, but it's not bad by any means. The new Ellie Flash is from what I hear, mm, I never tried it, but it's decent, but not very good. So you're still better off with these two. And all the other options, just simply don't use them. Now for the third major part of this guide, it is Kaching's teams and synergies, of course. Since Kaching is an Electro unit, we'll have a look at Electro Resonance first. It's called High Voltage. 
um, it basically gives you more electro particles, um, so faster energy recharge. It's not bad, but in my opinion, you essentially never really need it. That said, I prefer to use it anyway because I use Thunder Soother on Kitching and another Electro unit makes it much easier to keep the Electro status applied on the enemies. Which brings me to the Electro support options for Kitching. For most people, it's probably going to be Fischl because Fischl is very good at keeping Electro applied. She supports you very well while not being on the field with Oz and provides very good damage. A uh, quick overview for Fischl. She gets a lot stronger at Constellation 6 because of more hits by Oz, but she's perfectly usable at all levels. She also provides a great battery for um, other support units in that Oz creates an ungodly amount of particles. The other electro support option I want to mention is Beidou because um, A, she provides a lot of damage support through her ultimate, but contrary to Fischl, she really needs her ultimate to do her damage and be good at supporting. So take that with a grain of salt. If you struggle with energy generation, you're probably better off with Fischl. The third option is Lisa, which is also surprisingly good. Many people are sleeping on Lisa, but her second skill actually gives her ultimate the ability to reduce defense by 15%, which is not only a very rare skill in this game, but it's also an area of effect ultimate that lingers, so you can pop her ultimate and switch out which yeah makes her quite good uh quickly for the gear i would recommend for these units for official it would be um two thundering fury two gladiator because all her oz abilities scale on official's attack and the gladiator yeah for the attack and the thundering fury because also only deals electro damage for beidou um, you can run either to Thundering Fury and to Noblesse because she will do most of her damage through her ultimate. Or alternatively, for Thunder Soother is what I'm running because I value a very big number from her E if you get a perfect parry. Um, you may have seen it in my Spiral Abyss clears that I use Beidou for her C6, which decreases electro resistance of enemies by 15%. Also a quite rare and very, very good skill. But of course, I'm aware not everybody's gonna have a C6 Beto. Then as for Lisa, yeah, she's just gonna run um, same as Beto normally, uh, just a simple two Thundering Fury, two Noblesse. That, or for Noblesse, if you want her to give the attack buff over Bennett. So in my case, I prefer to use Beidou in this slot as the Electro support. Then, because we do like at least some reactions, even though Electro reactions are very bad, the best supports here would be Mona for a more burst-oriented team, which wants to, which aims to kill stuff very quickly because, well, we all know what Mona does. Her ultimate uh, gives the Omen debuff, which increases damage dealt to the enemies, as well as doing decent damage by itself, even without melting it. Ah, not melt, vaporizing it, of course. So Mona would be one of my top recommendations for this, and the other one is, as everybody knows, Xing Shou, because, well... His ultimate is just very, very strong, especially for sustained damage dealing. So in summary, Mona for more burst-oriented support and Jingshou for sustained DPS. As for their equipment, I use on my Mona two, uh, a two-piece from the Hydra set for extra Hydra damage bonus and two-piece Noblesse for extra elemental burst damage bonus. 
because I don't value her E very much and I do not intend to stay on her and auto attack. And for Xingxiu, the same thing. Um, assuming you have a fourth unit in your team that provides Noblesse buff. If you don't, I would recommend for Noblesse on Xingxiu. So here we go. It I use my Mona here. And for the last unit on my main teams, that would usually be Bennett. Although, unfortunately, I very much regret having C6 uh, my Bennett, which converts the attacks into Pyro, which costs me a lot of DPS at this point. But here's to hoping for <laughs> a change to the game system that lets me disable his Constellation 6. So quickly about Bennett, he pretty much always runs for Noblesse Oblige for even more attack buff, which, yeah, it's just his main use. Give him your highest base attack weapon, which would usually be either the Ali Flash or an Aquila Favonia to maximize his attack buff. And yeah, he also, also functions as a healer, which just gives him probably the highest value of any unit in this game. Gonna be epic. So this is my main Kaching team, but you probably want options for other Kaching teams, which uh, could include something like Kaching, Fischl, Xingxiu, and justice. Bennett. In this case, it's um, you have very high passive DPS from these two, and Bennett's still here for the buffing and healing. Another option, of course, would be to use the Beidou with composition with Zhongli instead the of the Bennett, told. if you want to use Bennett on the other team. I unfortunately don't have Zhongli, so I can't show it, but um, he provides even more resistance shred, does increasing Kaching's damage in another way than Bennett's attack buff. Um, then another option, of course, uh, to replace Bennett Here, with, if you feel like you, you do not need a healer, uh, you could just run Lisa instead and give her four Noblesse for an attack buff and also more Electra application and the defense debuff. Another comp that's quite good for speedrunning, if you guys are into that, I don't know. Then I'm going to show you a composition if you don't use for Thunder Suzer specifically, like for example, um, two Thundering Fury, two Noblesse. Would be very good to run something it's like Xing Shou and um, Zhang Ling, or even Venti over Xing Shou, which would um, devolve into more of a quick swap team. And at Could Bennett, you get epic. Pyro Resonance um, and you rotate through your supports constantly to keep spamming ultimates and killing large amounts of enemies very quickly. Then of course there's the ever popular meme teams like Pyro off. Pitching, this is long overdue. <laughs> which I'll throw in a little clip here. So as you can see, I'm just using plunge damage from Venti and Bennett C6. So yeah, the thing about this one is you need Bennett C6 to do your damage because he converts her attacks into Pyro. So yeah, it's a meme. Don't use it. Same thing can obviously be done with Chongyun and converting Kiching to Cryo attacks. In this case, I'd probably recommend something like Chongyun is the cryo right. super port and maybe gain cryo resonance by either you gain cryo resonance or you want to run a melt comp with Zhang Ling. Both are fine, I'd say. Not great, but fine. Or you go with cryo resonance with, with something like Ganyu or Chi Chi or Diona. All decent options, but like I said, it's a meme team. I wouldn't rely on it. <clears throat> then of course um, there are the viridescent venerer supports which is mainly venti but can also be gene functioning in the healer slot uh, decreasing the electro resistance of enemies uh, the issue i run into this uh, with my comps is that 
the opponents need to get the electrostata supplied and then you need to swirl them to get the benefit which takes a lot of time so i don't really use these comps in my videos at the end of the day though especially if you're looking for overworld teams just use whatever you like overworld really doesn't matter your kitchen could do everything by herself just play whatever you enjoy and have fun with kitchen Now, which is probably going to be a more whale-ish category, we're going to go over Kaching's constellations. The first one <clears throat> allows your stellar restoration, which is her E skill or elemental skill, to cause the lightning stiletto to explode and deal 50% of her attack as electro damage um, at the start point and the end point when you reactivate it. So it's best used by standing point blank to the enemy, throw your stiletto right on them and then reactivate it to essentially get 100% of Kaching's attack as extra electro damage. It's not very much, but it is more damage, so I guess it helps. And the second one it helps with energy generation, which is nice, but again, I wouldn't call it necessary. But then we get to the to the more interesting ones. Um, the ultimate level increased by three is quite a lot of damage. Uh, as you can see, my Kaching is maxed out, and at maximum level, her ultimate deals a lot of percentage of damage. So in my case, in Spiral Abyss, uh, it deals over 200k just by itself. That is, of course, with Bennett buffs, Mona buffs, um, Beto buffs, but still, it, it's a decent number considering Kaching does not have access to any decent reactions at the moment. Let's hope for Electro buffs. Constellation 4 is another interesting one. When she triggers elemental reactions, her attack is increased by 25%, which is quite good, but... As you know, um, triggering the reactions with Kaching is, I guess, it would be the most usual occurrence because um, you will have her on the field a lot. And if you have her supported by either Mona or even uh, Xingxiu, you will trigger uh, electrocharged reactions quite consistently. So the extra 25% attack are quite nice to have. So C4, I'd say is actually worth it. In C5, we have the same thing as Constellation 3. It's just three levels on the skill, which is quite good. It's a lot of damage you get out of it. So I like C3 and C5. And here's C6, which I find quite disappointing considering it is C6. But what it does is it can stack up to four times triggered by normal attack, charge attack, skill, and burst, adding each adding 6% electro damage bonus. So altogether, it is up to 24% electro damage bonus you can gain at, for Kijing, which sounds good, but since you basically need to apply all of her abilities, like normal attack, charge attack, skill, and burst, to get the maximum bonus and it only lasts for eight seconds it is a bit underwhelming it is a consistent bonus because you'll always attack in some way but if you're looking to spend money i do not recommend um actually chasing for high constellations on kiching she works just fine without any constellations it changes nothing about her playstyle, contrary to other units like xiao or I guess, child, even Hu Tao. But that's neither here nor there for now. Kaching, perfectly usable, no constellations needed. And here is one of the last points already her talent priority. I usually recommend for most people to start leveling up her uh, her normal attacks, Yunlai Swordsmanship, um, to at least 8. Then continue with Star Wars Sword, her ultimate, to 
eight as well. And then you have to make a choice. Um, you can just uh, level these two to nine and then ten, finally, and use your crowns on Kijing, which I would recommend because she is best girl. Or you can um, get the E up to eight as well, and then you get to the point where you need to spend um, two uh, rings of Boreas on each upgrade. So I will I would leave this up to the user. But in my opinion, talents are just a very essential thing on every character. So if it's possible, I always recommend going for talent upgrades as soon as possible. If you have the rings, just get the books. Just do it. It's guaranteed damage. So don't skip out on guaranteed damage. So that was it. All the things I wanted to talk about are about Kiching. It's kind of basic, but if any of you have follow-up questions or even suggestions for a follow-up video, please let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. And yeah, I guess thank you so much for sticking with me through all the waiting time because... <laughs> Pretty sure most of you didn't expect it to happen anymore. I wasn't sure myself. But we finally got it done. So maybe come chat with me and a lot of other very cool people on Kaching Main's Discord. And until then, have a good day. Bye. Enjoy Kaching.